Hey guys, Kangaskid18 here, and today I'm going to talk with you about the shinies from Pokemon Sun and Moon, and how come so many of them look kind of off. There seems to be a reason for it, but in my opinion, it's not a very good reason. And to explain it, I'm going to need to give y'all a bit of a backstory here. So to start off with, what is a shiny Pokemon? A shiny Pokemon is a rare color variant of a Pokemon species. For example, in the case of shiny Charizard, it turns black instead of orange. And I'm not kidding when I say they're rare. In Sun and Moon, you have a 1 in 4096 chance of finding a shiny Pokemon. Those are the same odds as X and Y and Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, but in these new games, a lot of shiny hunting methods have disappeared. Dexnav, Pokeradar, Fish Chaining, all these things are missing in Sun and Moon. There are still ways to hunt for shinies, but perhaps that's a topic for another video. So how does Game Freak design shinies anyway? Take for example the Clefairy line and the Jigglypuff line. Gold and Silver were the first where shiny Pokemon appeared, and in those games these Pokemon had a pretty similar color palette. That is, the set of colors used when creating a Pokemon sprite. In each of those lines we can see black, white, and a pink color, but the Clefairy line has brown highlights, while Igglybuff has darker pink highlights, and the rest of the Jigglypuff line has blue highlights. So to create a shiny, Game Freak simply switched the color palette to the next suitable one in the game's code. And in the case of similarly colored Pokemon like these, they ended up receiving very similar shinies. In both lines, each Pokemon receives a slightly different colored shade of pink, and the highlights all end up bright green. But later games removed the color restrictions that Gold and Silver had, and suddenly Pokemon could be all the colors of the rainbow, and thus the color palettes got much more complicated. This image is the result of a Java program created by Reddit user Ne. 12648430, and you can find the link to his thread in the description. But you can see just how many colors are required for a seemingly simple sprite of one of the game's early Pokemon. But the method for creating a shiny is largely the same. Take the color palette of the sprite and simply alter all of the colors until you get a decent looking shiny. There are occasionally some touch-ups required, but overall changing the colors of a sprite's palette is how Game Freak did things for five generations. But a shiny Pokemon's colors didn't always stay the same across all these generations. Take Psyduck for example. He looked pretty goofy back in Gold and Silver, and quite a bit different from the official artwork. Back then, Psyduck's shiny was a deep periwinkle color, but as the games evolved and the colors got more complicated, Psyduck's shiny had to be redesigned, and in doing so, shiny Psyduck became more of a baby blue color, and even his bill and feet became slightly bluish. As the Pokemon games entered the 3D era, Psyduck's shiny stayed pretty much the same, retaining that same baby blue coloration. But not all the shinies evolved in the same way. Some shinies got significantly worse throughout the games. Sea King is a good Good example of this. Back in Gold and Silver, Sea King Shiny was a deep golden color with a greenish tinge to all the fins. And when Game Freak reinterpreted the shiny for Ruby and Sapphire, they gave Shiny Sea King a light orange color, keeping those greenish fins. But unfortunately, it went downhill fast. In subsequent generations, Shiny Sea King became a darker orange, far too similar to its original coloration, though to be fair, those green fins stuck around. And with the advent of 3D models, Game Freak had a chance to make everything right and give Sea King a great shiny again. So what they did was keep it pretty much the same as the last couple of games. Slightly different orange with green fins. And it's too bad, really, because can you imagine how cool Sea King would look if they stuck with that original golden shiny? Thankfully, not all the shinies got worse through the generations. Some even got better. Take Espeon, for example. Back in Gold and Silver, Espeon had a bright green shiny with a dark green jewel on its head. And as the sprites evolved to look more like the official artwork, so the shinies changed. In Espeon's case, its shiny took on more of a yellow-green color with bluish ears, purplish eyes, and a deep orange jewel. And to many people, this is one of the worst shinies in the game, something not worthy of a Pokemon as cool as Espeon. But when the Pokemon games entered the realm of 3D, Game Freak took the opportunity to change Espeon, and in my opinion, for the better. Starting with X and Y, Espeon became a darker green color with blue ears, but the same eyes and jewel as its regular model. I think it looks great, and in fact, Espeon is one of my favorite shinies now. But I do think it's kind of weird that the eyes and jewel don't change colors, because if you recall earlier, shinies are created by a complete palette swap. In most cases, all of the colors change, even if it's just slightly. But due to the advent of 3D models, designers are no longer beholden to a set bank of colors to use for a sprite. Instead, to make a shiny, they have to create an entirely different skin for the in-game model. On the plus side, this change has given us some of the coolest shinies in the game, like Black and Red Aegislash and a distinctly multicolored Halucha. Neither of these shinies is particularly likely with a palette swap, but both are perfectly possible when creating a new skin for a model. Even with this new method of shiny creation, Game Freak continued to do things pretty much by the book. Most of the time, a shiny Pokemon gets a change to all its colors, and in X and Y, Clauncher, Spritzy, and Sylveons are particularly good examples. 
Cluncher turns bright orange but gets blue bits, white highlights, and a dark underside. Spritzy becomes a grayish purple but the eyes turn yellow, the feet turn magenta, and even the face gets a pinkish tinge. And Sylveon switches all of its blue and pink colors around and the body turns a bluish color. All of these shinies are pretty unlikely with a simple palette swap, but they still more or less adhere to the basic rule of creating a shiny. All the colors should change, even if just slightly. Which brings us to Sun and Moon. Now to start off with, Sun and Moon has given me some of my favorite shinies of all time. I love green shiny Rowlet, blue shiny Rockruff, and black shiny Minior. But outside these couple exceptions, Sun and Moon is doing something weird with its shinies that's never been done before. I'm gonna throw a couple of Pokemon up on the screen and see if you can tell what's going on. Here's the regular form of Picky Peck, Crab Brawler, Gumshoes, and Bound Sweet. And here's their shiny colorations. Did you see what happened there? Only a relatively small portion of each Pokemon's colors changed, and often huge sections, or even its main colors, stayed the exact same. And this happens time and time again with Shinies in Sun and Moon. A lot of the subtle color changes that made Shinies unique is gone, and in fact, out of all the new Pokemon, there's only one that I would say adheres to the old way of making Shinies. Can you guess which one it is? Oddly enough, it's Passimian. At first, it seems like its Shiny falls into the same pitfalls as a lot of the Sun and Moon Shinies. It gains blue highlights with light brown coconuts, and every everything else stays the same. But looking more closely, it gets black forearms, and in fact, all the black colors on its body have been given a slight hue change. And then there's the white symbol on its helmet, which is not the same white as the rest of its body, which seems to have been given a kind of yellowish tinge. Sure, the leaves stay the same color, but I'm willing to forgive that in lieu of some of the other subtle changes Game Freak has made to this shiny. All in all, I like most of the shinies from Sun and Moon, but I do wish that Game Freak had taken the time to make those subtle changes that we've seen from shinies for the past six generations. And while the new shinies range from great like the black and red Oracorio Bile, to the bad like the yellow eyes of Wishy Washy Solo, and the really bad like Cosmog and its pink cheeks, I'm still really looking forward to shiny hunting in Pokemon Sun and Moon. Anyway guys, I'm planning on doing a Sun and Moon Let's Play beginning next Friday, and then jumping right into shiny hunting after that. So I hope you guys are as hyped as I am. But until then, as always, we are gonna see you on the next shiny.